Assalamu alaikum. Good afternoon. So great to see you all. So t I'll tell you a bit about uh, how this all started. It started as a dream, a dream of my mother. She came to me one day and she said, Shahir, there's this competition called the International Young Physicist Tournament. She said that Pakistan is not a participant in it. She said, I want you to introduce Pakistan to it. I want you to participate in it, to open the doors of physics, the open, to open the doors of this Physics World Cup into Pakistan. So I said, uh, OK, seems pretty interesting. So why not uh, give it a try? I gathered a team of five students. I got some sp sponsors from some university. And I contacted the organizing committee of the competition. And I was like, we're participating. Uh, we have not, never participated before, Team Pakistan. So tell us, uh, how should we proceed? So they were like, uh, you cannot participate this year. You need someone who has been here before. You need someone who has visited the competition and been there and seen all the, the proceedings of it and the rules and regulations and all that. So he was like, you cannot participate this year. And I was pretty disappointed that why are they creating this barrier for us? Because I wanted to participate that very year. So I became annoying. <laughs> I became re really pushy. I would send them many emails. I would bug them on Twitter. And I made quite a ruckus about it. And in the end, they were like, OK, OK, calm down. We'll do it. You can come this year. Just uh, we'll send you an endorser ourselves, a person who has already been to the competition. You've come and participate this year. So we were like, OK, good. <laughs> we have done it. And we went to the competition. Uh, the comp tell you about the competition. It's uh, the International Young Physicist Tournament. So we have 17 problems. They're all unsolved problems of physics. And the team, individually, each member has to do two problems and create a type of thesis presentation. Usually, it's the research happens over a period of a year. We had six months, but we still managed to do two problems each. And we went to the competition. We introduced Pakistan. We lost, but that was not a problem because our main goal, which was to introduce Pakistan to it, had been complete. Then, when we came back, Again, a dream leads on to a dream, as was said. So my mother again came to me, and she was like, OK, Shahir, <laughs> you have a research now. I do not want this research to die away, to fade out, or to get corrupt in some computer file. She said, I want you to publish a research paper before you start your A-levels. And I was like, OK, sounds interesting. And normally, one expects that uh, these type of research, you publish a paper when you're in your doctorates and your PhDs. But they're like, OK, let's give it a shot. Trying is the key. You, if you try something, you might surprise yourself. So I gave it a shot. I wrote a paper over a year. I'm an experimentalist. And to tell you more about that, I get this a lot that I notice things a lot about people. When you do experiments, you have this thing that you look at all the parameters of everything. So sometimes I tell my friends something about them, and they're like, how did you notice that? Why are you like this? And I'm like, I then make this quote up that if you want to be successful, observe everything. And I'm, yeah, so I say this to them, and then they're like, OK, you're, <laughs> we'll, we'll think about it. Another thing about experimentalism is that when I was doing my further research on the, after the competition. I used to do it at home. So I used to be in the room. And I have a twin sister who also came to, with us to the competition. But she, she, used, she was sitting like in the room, and I was doing my experiment on one side. And I had created my own environment. And she was part of that environment. So I had turned off the lights. I turned off the air conditioning. I had this loud arcing happening from the high voltage. And there was ozone being produced, O3. It's quite pungent smelling gas. And she was like, before that, she was enjoying some Korean drama on her laptop. And when she noticed that things are changing around her, she was like bickering and screaming at me and telling me to get out. And my mom, she just came in and she saw me in an awkward position doing some experiment on the side. And there's like ta 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 flashing and stuff happening. And my sister screaming on one side. And she just, just said, nope. And she just went out. And she left it to us. 
to resolve it ourselves. So I ignored my sister, and uh, I'd say that I'm quite happy <laughs> that I ignored her because the reason my paper got published was because of that experiment I did in that room that day. So ignore your siblings, do not listen to them. <laughs> create, create, do not care about their comfort zone, you create your own comfort zone. Yeah, there's a quote by uh, Newton, a very famous quote, and a very one which I believe in even, that uh, if, for if I have seen further, it is by standing on the shoulder of the giants. And I believe this is really true. We normally believe, we blame the system, we say that, okay, we've not done this, we could not do this because our system is like this and this, and it does not allow us to do this stuff. But if we look at all the pioneers and the people who did great things, who did big things, who pioneered, we see that all of them had one thing in con common. They never relied on the system. They always went outside it and did it. And I can say myself even that I never relied on the system. So we should not keep the system as an excuse for ourselves. We should not blame it for something we cannot do. Another thing, which is age. Age is never a barrier. If we start saying or start making age an excuse for something we cannot do, then I say that we have failed at that point. I'll be pretty blunt about it. We should never blame age for something we cannot do. Another, uh, in my research, when I did it, so there was, it's, I'll tell you about my research, the electric honeycomb. It's basically where you apply high voltage on a layer of oil and you create these patterns, uh, some patterns form on it. Now, another thing our youth also does that they do not try new things. They think that, okay, this is something which has not been done before and it's pretty difficult and I'll probably try it and I'll, I'll probably fail. And they like, Calculate everything at once, uh, all the future and the planet and the mind, and they say, okay, we're not doing it. So we should not do that as well. Once you try it, I believe you surprise yourself. And I surprised myself even when I got it published. I did not know it would get published, and I did not know all the media and all the stuff which happened after that. It was pretty like a surprise for me. Now, there's this thing in science called biomimicry. It's where you observe nature and you apply it to your, your uh, technology and to your human life. And when that happens, we see that things happen much better it's in technology. So we see that the universe is multidimensional. We live in a multidimensional universe. So why should we, as an individual, be unidimensional? There's this thing that you have this certain objective and you go towards it, but you choose only one path, the shortest one or the easiest one, or whatever path you like to take. But why can't we do like this, that we take half the path, then we jump onto another one, take that for as long as we like it, then go to another path, take that and till the end. So we should be multidimensional about things. Multidisciplinary sciences these days are the new fields. One does not only study physics, one does not only study chemistry, we study everything. I myself, I can call myself a multidimensional person because normally when people approach me, they're like, okay, you're a nerd. You only know physics, you're stuck in books. I'm like, no, I do many other things, arts, piano, different things. So we do not restrict ourselves to one thing. Many, if we look at history even, again, coming to the standing on the shoulders of giants, if we look at the past, we see many people. There is this scientist, Bose, from India. He was a physicist, he was a botanist, and he also did, made, pioneered the radio. He was many things at once. And being many things at once is what makes us successful. So I would like to also, uh, like myself as a, in, as a Pakistani, uh, there's a lot of this thing, this idea that you go outside Pakistan and then the brain drain happens. I would like to say that wherever we are, Wherever we go, whatever we do, we are still Pakistani from the place where we were born. I am proud that I did something, and I did it in Pakistan. I didn't do it. Some people thought that I went outside to do it, and to Russia, but that was just the competition. So I'm proud to say that I did it in Pakistan. And, I, and the resources here are good enough. But we should also be more permeable to the idea of going outside. 
this world is our place. This world was created for us. We cannot, borders are just some figment of human creation. So we should not restrict ourselves to a certain country and just stay there because we're very patriotic about it. We should explore everything. Because wherever we're born, we're from that country. And we represent that country wherever we go. And just like this, I would like to add that I would... <laughs> it's another dream after this, after the dream leads to a dream, to another dream. I have a, a dream for a very long time. It's also my mother's dream. My mother is basically me. If you go to my Facebook ID, you'll see that I might have my own name, but if you look up in the URL, you'll see that I have my mother's name over there. So I keep a part of my mother in my identity, which is really dear to me, because everything I am is because of her. Behind every person, there's a woman, and that woman is my mother. So she also inculcated this dream in me, and I also had it since a very young age, that I will win the Nobel Prize for Pakistan, inshallah, in a few years, uh, in a, <laughs> as many years as it takes. So yeah, I would like to end my speech here. Thank you. It was really great to talk to you.